skipping it tonight, boys. Yeah, I just finished up the Richmond Sock Eyes PJHL Junior B ice hockey game. I was the play by play commentator on playfullscreen.com and mixlr.com. You can check all of that out on Thursdays at 7 if you want to listen to me doing live play by play. And it's quite weird being in a cold environment talking for three hours straight because now I am home and I would like to think that I would like to watch the Canucks because I didn't watch any of the Canucks today. And I got an overwhelming majority response from you in the last video saying that you would like me to still upload a video reviewing the Vancouver Canucks versus the Edmonton Oilers, even if it was late. Because I just got home, it's 10 p.m., and I will be watching the highlights. I'll watch the highlights. You know, I'm kind of in a play-by-play -play mood. I just finished up three hours worth of play-by-play. -play. There were stoppages, there were injuries, there were big hits, and the game went longer than I thought it would. The one that I was watching, the PJHL Richmond Sockeyes. So, it's been a little bit longer. And now I am at home in the comfort of my own chair, and let's load up these Vancouver Canucks highlights and I will talk about things that go along with them. Let's mute Shorty's commentary, I love you Shorty, but I wanted to commentate on this myself, just based off of the highlights here posted on the post-game thread on our Canucks by Nivy Spoony. Puck gets sent back over to the point, that's a long shot from Rafferty! First shot of the game for the Vancouver Canucks, and Brogan Rafferty gets one past... Who's that goalie? Is it Talbot? No, it's not Talbot. Oh my goodness, what am I saying? Cam Talbot? No, it's not Cam Talbot. 19, who is that? Miko Koskinen? Ah, uh, okay, a quick check up on NHL.com does say it is Miko Koskinen. He lets in a drive from Brogan Rafferty after JT Miller wins the faceoff. So... Again, it's Brogan Rafferty. He's a guy that I mentioned previously as somebody that a lot of people that I've seen around Vancouver media legitimately believe has NHL upside. And I saw that a little bit when he played with the Vancouver Canucks earlier last season. I saw him, I thought he was very, very smart when he was holding onto the puck for less than two seconds. Even in the rest of the preseason games, I was really impressed with Brogan Rafferty's quick decision-making and puck skills. But when he held the puck for more than three seconds in the defensive zone, that's when he really started to show the immaturities to his game. That's where he would hold onto the puck for too long and drag things out for too long and get pickpocketed and stolen. But here, it's a quick, solid, easy drive, and he does the right thing. Gets it off immediately. It's in the back of the net. Brogan Rafferty's first NHL preseason goal. And of course, I'm only watching the highlights. I'm not going to be able to tell you if Rafferty was great this entire game or whatever. But just from what I saw here, nice, quick, accurate shot. Brogan Rafferty gets on the board. It's 1-0 Vancouver up until Cooper Marodi gets himself a goal. I'm not going to watch that. No, thank you. But at the end of the first period, we have ourselves another goal right here. It's a face-off over to the right of the Vancouver goaltender, bobbled up at the point, and it's stolen away. Here comes Tim Schaller over to Beagle with a high shot, and he absolutely rips it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Top shelf sniper Jay Beagle in the house here. There's a reason he's getting paid that contract. Crazy, crazy stuff. That was cool. Tim Schaller, that looked like the fastest I've seen Tim Schaller skate in a Canucks jersey. Ever? Steals the pass, puts on the Jets. He's not like super, super fast, but he's just fast enough to beat the defender. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. For a guy who's on the trading block, apparently, Tim Schaller had a pretty good play over there. That was mostly him. Obviously, gotta give credit to Jay Beagle for the really nice snipe as well. If Jay Beagle can put up those kinds of goals in the NHL, not in the preseason, but actually in the regular season games, I'd be really happy with that, you know? It'd be nice to have a fourth-line center who could contribute probably 7 to 12 goals on the year, right? Not to point any fingers, but Jay Beagle only got three goals last year in the Vancouver Canucks. Sure, he only played 50-something games, but still, man. Get them snipes. Get them goals. Like how he did today. Let's go over onto the next goal in the second period. This looks like it's a power play goal. 
Vancouver Canucks are settling things down. Bo Horvat rushes in with the puck, stops up at the goal line, controls, centers the feed for Sven Berchi right through the cross crease there. Wow, what a great pass from Bo. That must be great for Sven Berchi. Who was the one that set up the play? JT Miller. Oh my god, his second assist on the night. Nice, 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 nice from Miller. But Bo, streaking in, stops up the poise. He scans the ice, he looks for the open guy, and he waits. Waits it out and throws it with a pinpoint accurate pass over to Berchi, who's finally back. That was a cool goal. I really liked seeing that. For Bo Horvat, I think his playmaking can take a really big step next season if he just continues to work at it and he continues playing with actually good line mates. That would have been really cool to see Bo Horvat developing his playmaking skills with consistently good wingers like Pearson or Miller or even Berchi because he wasn't healthy the entire year. But Bo setting up Berchi on this pass is pretty good. Berchi in my opinion, he's a legitimate top six forward when healthy, who could contribute upwards of 50 points when healthy, but he's just not healthy, so I hope if Berchi is able to play the entire year this year, even if he's not in the Horvat line, have Berchi, who I think is a legit top six forward, playing on that third line with Adam Gaudet and Jake Vertanen or whoever, and I think that would be a really, really good way to put things. But let's go over onto the next Vancouver Canucks goal here. It looks like it's also a power play goal, assisted and scored by a few guys that I like. A few guys who I really, really like, actually. So, the play is over. Yashik sends a pass wing to wing. Erickson... Back over to Breezebois at the high slot, finds Yashik on the side, and he shoots and he scores. Lucas Yashik with a few seconds left on the power play. Damn, that's a great play. I love that. They're playing Yashik and Breezebois on the power play with Louis Erickson. Yeah, a great player to play on the power play with. All joking aside, Erickson with the nice triangle pass over to Breezebois, over to Yashik, who I believe is NHL potential. Nice. That's a really great goal to see. I love seeing that from our depth guys. Yashik, ooh, he gets that shot right through the arm and the pad of the goalie. Who's the goalie at that time? 19, still Koskinen. And was that Gaudet with the screen in front? Oh, it looked like Gaudet with the screen in front. I really like that. I'm a big fan of these things. But Brisebois and Yashik, two Utica Comets getting involved here. I really like the sound of that. I think they both have the potential to play in the NHL in depth roles, I believe, but still, I believe they're probably NHL players on some teams. So that's really great to see. Then going over into the third period, we have Bo Horvat. Let's take a look at what he does here on the four on four. Horvat picks up the puck, he's streaking in, cuts over to the outside, stops up. 10 seconds left on the four on four. The Oilers bring things back the other way, but Horvat swoops in with a steal. Comes in one-on-one -on -one with a shot, and he scores! Wow, nice play. One second left before things became shorthanded, I believe. And that's on the same goalie that was playing on the other game that I actually did watch. Starrett, I believe. So, nice. Really, really nice by Bo. Good forechecking, good pressure at the right place at the right time as the Edmonton defender bobbles the puck. And a perfectly placed shot for Bo Horvat, a guy who I can totally see getting 30 goals next season. Yeah, you heard it here first. Actually, you didn't really hear it here first. I'm pretty sure tons of other people have talked about it. But Horvat can legitimately score goals, and I think that's next up for him in his still young career. Looks like a 4-on-4 four -four goal to me, and that's the 5-1 to one goal. Let's go over to the final goal of the game with a few minutes left in the third period here. And we will be underway. And the play set forward in the neutral zone. Pass goes through the guy. Gaudet picks it up on the left side. Bobbles it for a bit. Sprawling defenseman and Gaudet. Oh my god, that's the NHL 19 goal. That's the NHL 19 goal where you're on the right-handed shot. You're streaking down the left side. You cut right and you shoot left. That's the classic, classic goal that you do in the video game. Great goal by Adam Gaudet right there. Wow, I love to see that. I love to see Gaudet getting his opportunities and getting those points. Great. He was screening on the power play, gets a goal here. I want to see Gaudet in the NHL full-time next season. 
Mark my words, I want to see that right here. But Gaudette gets the final nail in the coffin for the Edmonton Oilers. The Canucks take this one 6-1, to one, and my voice is very, very tired. It doesn't help that I am doing the Evolution 1079 CFML FM newscast tomorrow morning, 1030, 1130, 30 on the dot. Five-minute newscasts from me. You can catch me on CFML. But that was it. Hope you enjoyed this video. So to that, I gotta go to bed. I gotta get my voice rested up. And bye. <laughs>